42 and be like, hey man, Matt Stone, Trey Parker, you know, turn in the corner and you might just catch up to this guy. Yeah, Trey Parker. <laughs> Where were you when the Nazis attacked? Yes, I... What the fuck? Oh, we got one. We literally, we're closing up in one hour and, and we have oh, one. Oh, hi, Destiny. What's up? He's been weird when on. He's been known to stream on occasion. That's <laughs> true. Maybe his microphone's not. Hi, right, what's up? Sorry, what up? my microphone was turned off. What's up? How are we doing, guys? Oh, uh, we're doing good. We're doing well, well, I mean, uh, like a little tired. Yeah. Yeah. We're nice. sleepless. Twenty-seven. Degrees. What happened to you? Are you okay? You said something exploded. We just everybody Wait, in my life just wants to just crazy my, you know just water my life, just a lot of crazy shit my one of my wife's boyfriends just lost their mind and you know how it goes you know you know oh like, man right? yeah and he destroyed your we've kitchen. all been there we uh you just missed the boys discussion now we're talking about animation this man's making he said some amazing things we gotta mm. wait what was the um what was the final feeling on the boys just curious without reopening that whole thing Oh, that video was his, his. The whole video is Marvel is really shallow, while the boys is super smart and for intelligent people because it has things to say about society and deconstructing superhero as a genre. When it had some very, very nice choice quotes. To, yeah, that, that that was a very nice thing to say about that video, Molly. The boys is the show. For <laughs> hey, that was his. That was his point. He just uses English in a very yeah. unique way. Yeah, I wonder. Where, I legit wonder like where he's from, because he's clearly I'm a good nice Mars. Um, but yeah, the, what was the we, feeling we, here? We Do you guys in. feel like the boys was an intelligent? What, yeah, what was the verdict here? Uh, season one was a lot of fun, but I wouldn't call it like subtle or intelligent one. with how it approached yeah. its commentary. It was pretty on the nose. It's, it's kind of like the shallow beginnings of satire of uh, superhero stories. And then like, this season two, start, but season two was a mess, and season three was pretty meh. Pretty meh. You like season one more than season three? Fuck yeah. Season one's good. Yeah. Wow, a lot of wrong opinions but, in here. But, okay, but, gotcha. but, well, but, hey, but, hey, man. Hey, let's, you know, come on. Explain nice yourself. Oh my no. god. We won't get to uh, hear the silence. funny man ever again. Silence running away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, I don't want to. Well, yeah, if you want to. I. Season one, yeah, sure, uh, season one of any fantastic show, I think, has the huge advantage that it gets to lay out its whole world, which is always fun. And if it's a fun world, um, it's going to. Um, it's it's going to be fun to have like a season one, but I feel like in terms of like character development and everything, it was like eh, it just kind of like introduced us to the world, and I thought that was cool. Um, season two was a nightmare f train wreck clusterfuck of boring, horrible shit, where you had Frenchie and Kokimo or whatever the fuck was like the Sam and Gilly of the fucking boys, just like the worst thing. None of the characters did any. I don't know. I hated it. And then I thought season three actually like ramped shit up to where we were getting like a compelling story we were seeing real character development especially among people like butcher um we got rid of the cringe nazi shit which was good i don't know i feel like season three i feel like season three was on par with season one what do you think of the ending um a clusterfuck nightmare i don't know what was going yeah, on yeah i was gonna say they <laughs> fucked it all up because yeah. even, even i a person who was very cynical about season two and didn't even want to watch season three when Same. i was watching season three i was like okay at least They've got something to work with here. I'm liking Soldier Boy enough that I get. And then that last episode, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. They kind of went full Game of Thrones, subverting your expectations of anything making sense there. Um, Nobody yeah, dies I either. I can't, I can't defend. Well, oh, wait, did Soldier Boy just get locked up again or whatever? Yeah, he got locked yeah. up. Maeve survived for no reason at all. Like, Well, no, there was a even... reason for her to surviving, and it's because she was a lesbian. <laughs> True. Um, uh,. Yeah, and then we got uh, Butcher is alive still, but he's definitely going to die soon, TM. It's like, alright, fine. In the next season, you'll find a cure or something. Yeah, you know what the cure is going to be, right? No, what is it? Um, I feel like um, the cure is going to be, thematically, it seems appropriate. It feels like the cure is going to be the only way to undo the damage is to become a soup. You have to become a superhero to get Oh, rid like of for it. real. Yeah, and then it's like, you've in order to destroy what you've hated most, you become the thing you've hated, right? It kind of like works... Um, That'd be something, sure. Thematically, but um, yeah. So I haven't seen season three, but is it really thoroughly explored why the boys who seem pretty opposed to just superheroes principally would be willing to use Compound V to get superpowers? Well, I mean, that's kind of the whole that that like that's always a thing in in, in life or thematically, right? Like, do you 
like arguably like Batman is this, right? Um, do you remember when Joker's like, you're going to have to break your one rule? And it's like, well, do you want to become mm-hmm. the thing you're trying to destroy to destroy the thing you need to destroy? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I think like I'm the superhero stuff more, is like, it's like that. Yeah. It's like, well, they want to destroy superheroes and it seems like maybe the only way they can do it is with Compound V. So they start doing it and then they're able to compete with them more, but now they've kind of become I the think, thing they want to destroy. Well, it's kind of worse than that because they, because Huey does it as well, but they try and Huey's make reasoning it, is all for. They Which make it that okay. he's insecure and it's all about toxic masculinity. And it's like, no, he just doesn't want to be the weak one of the group. He wants to defend his Which, friends. Wait, yeah, like, that, uh, wait, that would have been Mahler way more solid. Wait, yeah. were you going to say it? Were you going to say the right thing or the well, wrong thing, Mahler? Go. Okay, I'll go. So the what what, what <laughs> CJ's just described, I think, would have been way better. But what they ended up doing, and they even lampshade how much they fucked this up. Huey admits, like, I fucking don't like being weaker than my girlfriend. Which is like, okay, that's something a, a man could struggle with, but you can't do it with Huey. You've already established well before, for many years at this point, that he doesn't care about that, and he never did. And then they acknowledge that, they're like, didn't you not care about it? And he just goes, yeah, but I do now. It's like, oh. So, if I'm going to give the writers credit, I might be reading too much into things. Um, but it, it seems like Huey has, like, an angel on his shoulder, which is, like, Starlight. And then he's got, like, a devil on his shoulder, which is, like, Butcher. And he's kind of pulled between these two worlds. I think for Starlight, he wants to be, like, um, we'll say the non-toxic man. Where it's like, oh, like, I can be supportive of my girlfriend in this way. And I'm kind of a smart guy. And I can be clever and do this and blah, blah, blah. But then when he's, like, in Butcher's world, Butcher is like, I'm a manly man and I get shit done. I literally beat the shit out of a soup to death because I compounded V'd up and I'm, like, a monster. And I think that you see this, like, fully realized in the scene where I think Starlight is begging him like, please come with me, Huey. Like, don't go with Butcher. And then he ends up going with Butcher and Soldier Boy. And I was like, well, this is the route that I'm choosing. The toxic masculinity route, essentially, right? Right. Which, yeah, I think they said that's their goal with this season was to... Mm-hmm. I can, One thing it. I can empathize with you, though, um, and this was a... <laughs> let's see if I can open up this can of words. This is a big criticism I had of Breaking Bad, okay? I right, love I love character arcs that develop. I don't like it when character arcs develop and undevelop and develop and undevelop and develop and undevelop. So one of the big mm. criticisms I had of Breaking Bad was that like I felt like I liked to see the dissolution of like Jesse and Walt's relationship, but I felt like it went back and forth so much. I'm like, okay, either like they hate each other and Walt's gone too far or not, and the back and forth was driving me crazy a little bit. Um, eventually the, it got on track, but yeah, go ahead. Is the problem that you have with that that it's rehashing or that you think it's unrealistic that this relationship would just keep continuing no i never care about it's not realism we're, we're, we're watching film and tv and all that shit i don't care about like oh, realism. No, it's what, just that it's the it's the, like, it's the rehashing of the redevelopment thing i just don't like to retread it happened a lot in uh, i'm sorry to bring up so much information but it happened in harry potter too where it feels like harry potter develops into this amazingly mature young man at the end of every book and then at the beginning of the next book he's like a kid again like doing dumb shit i feel like this was fully realized in the uh, seventh book where like at the beginning of the seventh book they felt like the kids from the first book Ron was like, we haven't found Horcruxes fast enough. I'm getting so bored. And like Harry and Ron are like, oh, well, we got to keep looking. But I was like, damn, you guys have like seen some crazy shit at this point. Like, shouldn't you guys be matured by now? But yeah, I don't know that like going back mm-hmm. and forth. There was always that element of like, they're almost fucking eaten by a huge spider in the first one in the mm-hmm. forest because that's just something that could that's happen. the second <laughs> one. How <laughs> fucking dare you. Yeah. There's I also imagine shit the PTA Potter. of Hogwarts is just like, yeah. Jesus Christ. It's a hard job. But, um, yeah, so out of interest then, because I would have my first defense for the the Walt and Jesse stuff would probably be that it's like an elastic band and it snaps in season five, like the yeah, fully for it. sure, yeah. Um, but like I can understand what you mean. Yeah, just to sort of clarify, was it you, you felt like it wasn't moving forward? It just kept repeating the same motion. Yeah, sometimes I feel like things start repeating over and over again, and it drives me crazy. Have you ever seen House, the TV show House? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's another I, good example. Lupus? I feel like that, well, no, 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 no. There were like th- I feel like there were three or four times where House like got clean off drugs, and it's like, oh, here's another arc where House gets clean, and then there's like a case that he can't solve, and he's running into a problem, and then he relapses. Oh boy, it's happening again and again and again. Like at some point, I'm like, damn, I don't need to watch the same fucking arc repeat itself. It like, seemed yeah. like you got through more House than I did. When I rewatched it after about four or five episodes, I was like, oh shit, like he figures it out every episode. Like, it's the same structure okay. all the time. Mm. Well, I don't have a lot of rules here when I'm on this show, okay? But we do not shit talk house. <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> like, Excuse me. Said house Wait, house time. is More your god? Like, Excuse me. House is <laughs> sacred. He's house. Smaller. He's house. Oh, I like the Stuart character, Little's but dad. surely have some respect. Formula, Sherlock. Right? It's like the same thing every single episode. For three seasons, I think, and then they finally switch it up? Or is it four? 
like uh, the formula, you know the one. Everyone makes fun of it. It's, it's every like the first solution is never right, and then yeah, of course, and then they do some. Well, I have to do a heart transplant to see if it's this disease, and Cuddy's like, no, don't do it, and he's like, oh, well, I sh I fucked his heart with my dick, and now I have to. He's gonna die, and it's like, oh, he did it, <laughs> and then like he gets a new fucking heart, and it's like, oh my god, it wasn't the heart at all. What happens? And then the patient is being like taken away because he's some like Ugandan criminal of war, and then House is like yeah. on the plane, and he like sees a bug fly into the windshield, and he's like, oh my god, the bug smashed it in the windshield, just like that guy's brain must have smashed against when he played soccer when he's in fourth grade and then he solves the whole case and everybody's like, yeah it's always like not every episode, yeah, yeah, like yeah, let's put a grenade in their brain and it's like that sounds like a bad idea and it will work out eventually yeah. like it's <laughs> he's house okay he can do that because he's house he's house okay chill i like house good i was, I was okay with house it did. what do you think of his ending dumb stupid <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes this is so cringe and i don't mean to be like a cringe debbie downer but i feel like some natural character arcs kind of have to end in death or some better feeling of completion like did anybody mm. else kind of cringe like a motherfucker when at the end of interstellar like the guy was still alive and floating through space and then flew like doesn't it seem kind of weird yeah wait are you talking about the coop uh yeah i think for other reasons yeah but then the fifth dimensional beings pluck him and send him back to his elderly daughter or whatever Damn, why can't crazy. they send him back like 30 years earlier if they're so fucking powerful at least jesus <laughs> because they're cunts <laughs> they just want to fuck <laughs> with him cunts. also wait hold on i just had a realization ways. is there a time continuity problem how is the how is murph still young if his daughter was old Okay, do we need to talk about Interstellar someday. <laughs> yeah, like, do seriously. it. If I can do it. Whole conversation. That movie is one of the worst things. It, none of it makes sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's horrible. Interstellar is amazing, okay? You just have to take your glasses off before you look at it, okay? Just don't look too closely <laughs> at it, and it's a fantastic Take your film. brain out before you look at it's it. It's a fantastic Maybe film. Maybe your eyes a couple of times. Yeah, listen, it's, it's, no, it's not Tenet, happy. okay? Oh, God. <laughs> No, with have Tenet, you seen that? You, I haven't actually seen it yet. Every single person does not recommend that one. It. You absolutely should watch Tenet. It will mind fuck you. Not in a good way either. It just is no thoughts, just vibes. Yeah, it is so, so Destiny, incoherent. It is the most the dialogue in Tenet. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, when you realize that every single piece of dialogue is actually Nolan writing something for you as the viewer to understand, and the characters never actually interact with each other in any way yeah. ever at. Like, yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Is this, like, peak Nolan? Because, like, that's one of his problems. His characters no. are always so, uh... Tenet is peak Nolan. You will never find a more Nolan film than Tenet. Yeah. I don't think he could make a more Nolan film than Tenet. Like, it's just... I just couldn't hear the dialogue. I literally couldn't oh, hear yeah. the soundtrack. <laughs> um, Doesn't matter. You're not missing anything. The audio balancing was Which horrible. is weird, because he had problems with that, with uh, Bane, remember? In Dark Knight Rises. Didn't they have to, like, redub him? Well, the first, yeah, yeah the first the, audio the, track was the preview, yeah. literally inaudible. I still think my favorite line in all of my favorite line in all of Tenet was when the main character, um, the black dude, was talking to the white dude. Um, fuck, I know him as <laughs> Twilight and Robert Pattinson and um, yeah, yeah. I always something really Washington, acting. right? Yeah, something I'm Washington. Yeah. yeah, is when uh, when he's like, "Wow, like you know all about time travel and all of this. It seems like really complicated shit. Quantum physics is time travel." And Robert Pattinson's character replies. Yeah, I have a master's in physics. And I'm like, dog, it's a movie. Why would you only give him a master's? And he knows about time travel? What are you talking about? Like, shouldn't this dude be like an ultra PA? Like, I don't know. It's just so funny. That movie is so fucking just hilariously contrived. Oh, my God. What do you I, think I remember Dunkirk? when I was watching it in the theater, um, like the movie actually froze, like the projector froze. And it was oh, like really? that for five minutes. And I think I just said out loud at about minute three, it was just like, wow, Nolan is a fucking genius and you're leaving us <laughs> in suspense here. That happened with me with Attack of the Clones in the theater. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It happened during the, the, Did that the improve weird the droid assembly line. The weird droid assembly line thing. I don't know. I was so young then. I was a dumb idiot anyway. So I don't even know if it made it better or not. No. Hmm. How, wait, real quick. That... I just need to vibe check. Does every because I see this brought up. I looked at Rotten Tomatoes. I couldn't believe it. Does everyone here agree? Hook was an amazing movie, right? Uh, the uh, Robin Williams one. Movie. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. I think I. Great. I, 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 I so long good. since I've seen it. I just don't it got such it shitty ratings. Yeah. I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> I had the same. Yeah. Experience same thing with Batman and Robin, but I don't, I don't get it. Weird. 80s, 90s businessman dad needs to learn to care about his family. Yeah, so wholesome. Stop doing so much business. Such a nice movie. I rewatched it recently. It was still a nice yeah. movie. Fuck, fuck the, fuck the haters. Yeah. 
Bob Marcus. Hoskins to me and Dustin Hoffman Hook. That was that's great. Perfect casting. I'm not even kidding. I really liked it. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in ages though. I should watch it again. That's great. It is great. Same. You found my marbles. You put your marbles away, meme. You stop that. No. Mm. Put them away. The marbles stay out. We're live. You can't just put your marbles out. I, yes, I will put only my marbles the... where I want. I will put no. my marble stack right here on no. the table. No, 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 oh, nasty. We only have to 30, do this 35 minutes. Now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my oh, marbles yeah. stay out for 35 we'll minutes. Just keep, <laughs> keep cycling oh, like media takes. Have you got any controversial Batman takes? How about that? <laughs> me? Yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, that <laughs> which, helps uh, me get to sleep more than controversy. What's your favorite Batman movie? <laughs> I, I'm going to give the boring, obvious answer, because I'm going to say my favorite one is the best one, which is The Dark Knight, of course. It's the best one. I mean, what am I what am I supposed to say, okay? It's the Empire Strikes Back of Batman movies, okay? You it's didn't just, like well, It's the, the best one. Batman. Now that mm. the Batman is out, that's not as clear-cut for some people. Okay, yeah. no, there's no shot that anybody could say that that is their favorite one. That movie is so fucking long, and it feels long, okay? Damn, long Batman. Batman. And therefore, yeah. My favorite that. movie is probably Fellowship of the Ring. That's long. Pretty long. But it doesn't just... feel long. Wait, hold on. You can watch the, well, Hang in on. my opinion, you can watch the extended cut. the pacing then. Yeah, I'm talking about the pacing. Like, those movies don't feel long. Those movies feel, those are finely length movies. <laughs> That's oh, a word. Pacing, pacing. You're They're finely length. Finely length. <laughs> finely length. <laughs> my favorite is finally actually Phantasm. Is that long? Is it That's well paced? Well, um, I think it's like 90 minutes or a little bit longer, maybe. How like finely length one. is it? Would you say it? It, it is. It is perfectly length. That's a lie. You know. Oh, I guess maybe beyond you know. that. Why is the Dark Knight your favorite Batman movie? Yeah. What is it that you think is so great about it? Uh, the I the just themes. think it's so. Without knowing anything about Batman, because there's going to be some Marvel comic loser that comes in oh, here. We, we DC don't comic loser. The, we don't care about. Uh, okay. Don't care about I just. Worry, I think that of it. all the criminals that like Batman has gone against, like in the shows, I think that that Joker is like the perfect foil to Batman. And I like the fact that Batman loses in the end. I think that's an interesting play on everything that happened. It was a smart character. Thematically, it was a really good foil to Batman. And um, like the, the pacing of the movie, the action scenes and everything is like super cool too. Like I just think it's like, it's a really good movie. Not perfect, curiosity. but really good. Yeah. What do you think about the system of surveillance that he managed to concoct? And Lucia says, on principle, I'm fucking firing myself. I can't be a part of this. This is like a disgusting uh, technology that I could never support. And he says, don't worry, we're going to use it once, and then we won't use it again. What do you think about that? Um, it, it feels kind of like the boys, like the soup thing, to where that, that plot point is a little bit contrived, but I think it, it all kind of goes to show, like, how far does Batman have to go to beat somebody like the Joker? Um, and it I don't of, think they oh, really ahead. address that in the movie. It feels like the movie is fine with the idea that, like, yeah, we're only using it once for good. It's fine. But do you do you really feel like they really go into it? Because he just says like, "I'll destroy it once we use it." I swear, and then he does, and they the scene is like Lucius is smiling. It's like, yeah, we did it. I think that they could have handled it more with more screen time, but like you could argue that like that's supposed to show the potential of Batman to go too far. But Lucius is happy because in the end he was able to walk up to the edge and then walk back from it rather than maintain something like that permanently. So Lucius is happy that like Batman hasn't been completely corrupted by the Joker. Maybe. He's not walking up to the edge. He used he it. He's already walked off. Well, the he edge did use it, but it was one yeah. time to stop a really bad dude. You know, we nuked Hiroshima well, so and Nagasaki. That's, that's okay, great. listen. Sometimes people I, have to go. To no, no, no. I know. Place. That's the thing. I actually agree to the yeah. point where I'd be like, Batman, you think that this is never gonna happen again? Mm -hmm. Like. Don't you think that if you're making an exception for the crazy guy who's going to blow up two big ships, you might want to save it for, you know, when fucking whoever else turns up. Here, so, here's something that I would want to <laughs> oh, see. No. Here's something I would want to see dealt with. The are, we all, cool. are we all here familiar with, like, Roroni Kenshin? No. He's the one with a sword God damn that's it. got the blunt edge on it. Yeah, or fuck is that weep stuff? Okay, is we that, all know... Is Yu Yu Yeah, it's... Hakusho. No, not Yu Yu Hakusho. We all know Batman, right? Here's an issue that uh -huh. I have. There's a lot of media where there are good guys that will never kill bad guys. And, uh -huh. you know, it's on principle. They're not going to kill the bad guy because that's just not what they're supposed to do. But the thing that's annoying is that it seems like very rarely does anybody have to deal with the consequences of being a pacifist in a way. I don't want to say yeah. bad as a pacifist. But mm. like, um, like 
I want to see. This, yeah. yeah, I want to see like yeah, okay, yeah. well you I let this dude live. I, arguably, you see it in in, uh, in uh, Spider Man where he lets the one criminal walk away every time, and then he kills Uncle Ben. Maybe right. that's like the only time he's gonna happen. But it always feels like there's an easy out for characters who are like, I'm not gonna kill you, but then like, oh, you could yeah, even Spider Man. Oh well, the bad guy kills himself anyway, right? The Green Goblin does it, and Tobey Maguire. The writer sort of sets it. them up to make it a lot easier. Are... To... Well, um, yeah, exactly. The octopus yeah. dude, yeah. Doctor Octo pulls the nuclear reactor in the water and he kills himself. Like all the bad guys always mysteriously permanently vanish at the end even when the good guys are like i'm gonna be a pacifist um, well it also goes far as you remember spider-man one for the raimi films the green goblin's like you got to choose a bus of children or you, you your love and he releases them both and then spider-man grabs both of them so it's like oh yeah what's the point there okay. yeah <laughs> no i know what that's you mean. like we, the fake had... choice but that it was really given in the dark knight in a really clever way i think um Have you oh you're talking seen... about the the choice but yeah like he tells them the locations of the two but he switches them yeah that's a really yeah that was yeah well I, th done. I i agree with that. and I one agree. dies which is what should happen well not dies but gets permanently fucked oh no no i'm sorry rachel does no, one does die. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that was handled really really well yeah have you well, seen daredevil have i seen what have you seen daredevil the netflix show oh, daredevil no i'm on the way home uh no i haven't i don't watch a lot of tv shows i don't have time I'm trying to work well. over here okay <laughs> we can't all do two well, people people die in both of those so hey you might like them yeah do people actually die or are the writers running about idea running out of ideas and like the third season they kill like uh, stars, kind of more the punishes in it so in, yeah like yeah. in dead of what is directly like addressed as a point of contention between those two characters that the philosophy of daredevil is yeah, cool. Like you fight the bad guys, and everybody calls you a hero. But then the criminals just go back on the street. So my solution is permanent. Mm -hmm. I get. Yeah, they have a big conversation about it. It's one of people's favorite, like favorite things favorite. about all of Marvel's content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty I'm good. I'm sure we'll see it in the forthcoming Daredevil show on Disney Plus. Oh, oh my great. god! Can't wait. I'm sure that wasn't monkey's poor. Oh, you keeping Lord. up to date with all Marvel content, Destiny? You better be. Am <laughs> <No. laughs> I missing something? Gotta have your finger on the pulse of culture. Mm -hmm. Something crazy. What do you think of a six hour critique of a single film? <laughs> Listen, some shows do that. I think that's great. I think that's awesome when people do that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so inclined. You're very progressive. I am. I try yeah. to be. <laughs> Cuck. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesus. I love how you really feel about six hour reviews. Don't hold yeah, but, did, but we're talking to someone who did like an eight hour long manifesto, so you know. Like, oh, that's true. That is true. You're in good, you're in good with, company. With yeah. yeah. That was like three in one. That's not fair. Is it? Well, I mean, if you split it up into three parts, sure, but you mm. know, make it as one whole. Story. How long did that take to write you? Was that like a month? Um. Truly, it was probably two or three weeks. It was just spread out over a couple months because I suck at maintaining projects once I start them. Jesus. I take longer than that. You get focused when you get. Uh, well, if I'm in spawned. autism mode, yeah, I'll just sit on my computer and I'll do <laughs> like that. I did a big Bob Seven manifesto. That was a big one. I did that in one night. I remember it was yep. fucking strange. Yeah, well, yeah. my life is. It's the ADHD strange. thing where you got to hyper focus on it, otherwise you just lose the the motivation. I think the way I describe it is, it's it's not the doing that's the hard part. It's the starting that generally <laughs> fucks me. Gotcha, gotcha. Destiny, what do you what do you think about the Last Jedi? Here you had a conversation. Oh God! Oh, Lord. <laughs> no, I got so well, many doing, emails. He was in, doing so well. Listen, doing that's so the thing well. where I told Mel, I was like, "Listen, Mel, one of these days we're gonna sit down for nine hours and we're gonna rewatch every fucking trilogy. No, not nine hours. It's probably like twenty hours." Or some shit. We're gonna watch them all, and then I'm gonna come back here, and you're gonna casually bring it up, and I'll be like, "Oh, let's talk about that," and I'm gonna ambush the fuck out of Dude, you, dude, with my extensive it won't be Jedi possible. knowledge. You can't. Do you think I don't rewatch those semi? It's like my whole you job. You can ambush us. Are you Star the? Wars. It's, it's really familiar to us. Did we go yeah. over the? You guys all like the prequels more than the sequels. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Oh yes, my god. Yeah, I, like I, you're I, just I, so wrong. It's just unbelievable. It's like you tell well, you're a flat I can't earther. Be wrong for like, I like the prequels more than the sequels. Sure. Yeah, it's just that the prequels are also objectively better than the sequels. <laughs> I was going to say, they're just fucking better. What an unbelievable yeah, opinion. Happened. But you guys are all like 18, 19, I think, so it makes sense, you know. I am 27, <laughs> sir. Uh, 27. 31. I'm British. actually 14. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm 63. Yeah, oh, wait, random question. Mahler, do you post on Reddit? Not really, but I have a Reddit account. Oh, okay, never mind. I see a guy posting in a subreddit I'm familiar with called Mahler X sometimes. I didn't know if that was you, so, all right. That sounds like the porn version. <laughs> <laughs> Mahler X? No, that's not me. 
Pornhub is, account. Is he also known as the long man? Oh no. No, more X just sounds like your version of Sonic X, so I'm yes. sure that's not a very good no, show at all. But... No, it's the anime <laughs> spin off, Mauler X Mauler. Okay. Mauler X Mauler. Hmm. Question. I don't know if you guys do know it. this or not. How do you guys feel about the new Marvel? Which is A24. Oh. A24. A24 is the oh, new right. Marvel. Wait, what? Every film one. gets ultra hyped. Everybody loves the studio. Everything comes out. People are sucking it off. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? What are your feelings on it? We fucking hate. Well, phase four has been garbage. Yeah, phase fucking four. Garbage. Wait, we, I thought you were talking about no, Rags. 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 No, he's not. We're talking about A24, the studio. A24 is a movie studio, right? Yeah. As, as oh, time goes uh, on, like the percentage um, of hits of what they release gets less and less, in my opinion. Yeah. I think the last movie I saw from them was The Green Knight, and I really didn't like it. No, the last movie you saw from them was Everything Ever Rolled yeah. One. Oh, yeah, that's right. I adored that. That shit's fire. Wait, um, Desi, what's your opinion yeah. on The Green Knight? I remember. You had a controversial one, right? I walked out of the movie theater hating it. I almost got up and left. I don't blame you. Because it was so confusing. And then I went on Reddit and I read this huge comment about Arthurian legends. And then I went back and I reformed my whole opinion on the movie. I thought it was a really, really well done movie. I just had no fucking background. And A24 is very much like a, you either understand it or you don't and fuck you, we're not gonna explain it. <laughs> like they're like for some of their more esoteric movies, they're very much like that. Uh, but having that understanding, um, if you watch The Green Knight and you don't understand anything about Arthurian legends, it seems like a dude goes on a really weird adventure with a lot of random fucking shit that makes no fucking sense, and then the movie ends, and you're like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. Um, yeah, that, but, that was, it be, but wait, wait, wait. Shouldn't it be good if you haven't read a bunch of Arthurian legends? Like, yeah, um, I've read, like, The Once and Future King. Sure. So, well, I, 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 I mean, things can be good or bad depending on your reason. Some people argue you shouldn't need the background. Some people show you should. But having the background, like, for Arthurian legends, like, when you go on certain journeys, there are, like, different tests that you have to go through in order to prove your might or your worth or whatever. And Oh, so, have, like, most era stories? Well, kind yeah. of. But Arthurian legends, I think, are done in a more particular type of way. And when you go back and you watch The Green Knight with that understanding, every single little... Um, trial that he goes through is testing one of the five Arthurian virtues or some shit. And when I could understand all of the different trials of that, it was like friendship with the um, fox thing. It was like greed or something. I don't remember with the woman and the thing. When I could go back and understand that, I was like, oh, all of these little mini trials make sense and I could see how he failed or succeeded on what? some of these. And then I understood question, more. Uh, yeah. You said that you watched it and you weren't familiar with the Arthurian because I wasn't either. Mm -hmm. When you got to the end of the film, did you like and appreciate the last 10 minutes before you had gone back and rewatched or like learn more about Arthurian legend? I mean, it looked nice. Is that? Well, I guess what I'm saying is that for me in the last 10, 15 minutes is when I liked it a lot and mm -hmm. I just wasn't feeling everything leading up to that point. Like the last 10, 15 minutes felt like a, a story it's almost like they snuck in a movie into the end and they didn't need really <laughs> well, anything I, that came before it almost well, so the reason why i'm asking is because i it sounds like the first time around you just found the whole thing like kind of just worthless yeah i didn't understand what the point of anything was yeah well even the ending though like even when we got the whole story of him living his life like past the decision he made and then yeah but this is apart, understanding the Understanding the Arthurian shit fleshed that out so much more for me because seeing sure. the ending was just like, oh, I guess if he's like a shitty person, then this is what his life is going to be like, I guess. But knowing how the Arthurian shit looked, then I could look at the ending and go, oh, this is why he needed to go through the trials and tribulations is because the life that is going to follow him is going to be a life led without following the Arthurian virtues. And all of the bad stuff that was happening in that future vision was if you fail to be virtuous in these manners, if you can't resist temptation, if you're not loyal to your friends, if you can't resist. Um, you know, urges for greed or whatever. These are the types of specific things that will fall upon you and, and, and befall you, I guess, for your life or whatever. And so, yeah, having that context made me appreciate it anymore. The ending was like kind of cool, regardless, I guess. But like after suffering through the whole movie without understanding anything, it wasn't enough to salvage it for me until I got more context after the movie. Well, so, how do you feel about that though? That you think in this case with this film, you kind of had to get this external information in order to uh, make sense of the film. I generally don't like it, but I mean, like, you know, things are what they are. Sometimes you need external shit, sometimes you don't. I, like, if I'm watching, it just depends on the type of movie I'm watching. If I'm watching an A24, if I'm watching a Marvel film, I better understand everything right in the fucking movie. And if you're not explaining to me, fuck you. But if I'm watching something a little bit more artsy, <laughs> then um, then I can understand that there's probably going to be stuff going on that I don't understand that I'm going to need some background context for. And so for, like, an artsy A24 film, I figure that's kind of, like, required. I need some kind of background, which is okay. With the, yeah. with the way that you framed the question, it sounded like you have spicy opinions on A24. Do you or do you not? 
Um, I generally like what all is, this stuff, I but I just... What the opinion is. Uh, yeah, Did you I'm... see the movie Men? I have not. Hmm. I just see a lot of stuff out. getting... A lot of stuff <laughs> will get brought up in, like, the movie subreddit, and people sometimes will get mad. Where There's almost, like, a reverse circle jerk against A24 films. Where, like, we get it. You like them. Like, who cares? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, A24 is super overrated now. Like, they do all this and that or whatever. So, I was just curious if you guys have... That's just, that's inevitable, that's just right? hipsters l l lamenting when things go mainstream. Yeah, sure. Well, I wonder if that's hipsters or if that's the, I guess, what you would consider artsy, like, film Twitter going up against kind of artsy film Twitter, the kind of people who, like, praise... I mean, what a lot of video essays do, right? Like, they kind of fit into that niche, where they still want to talk about, like, the big bombastic blockbuster films that are part of, you know, mm -hmm. with, like, the cinematography that they like. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't like that the conversation is now diverting towards, I guess, what you would call, like, art films, really. Sure. Like, very uh, much going for something more abstract. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. And unconventional, you know, in terms of storytelling presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true. Um, yeah, what else are you guys talking about? Oh, yeah, because we got another 20 minutes, so. Oh, my god. Have goodness you been out for like 20 me. hours or some shit, or? 25. They have. I'm just <laughs> drunk. At this point, yeah. Jesus. Okay. We do it once a year. It's wonderful. We cover gotcha. all kinds of things. You, you missed a whole bunch of wonderful video coverage. I swear you would have loved it. Okay. How do you feel about ex like difficulty settings in video games? That was one of the uh, earlier topics that we went through. Oh man, that goes all the way back to the beginning. We're going all the way back to square one, yeah. Uh, in the olden times. Um, I like both ideas. Um, difficulty settings can be fine in video games if you want to make video games for like a wide audience of people. I think that's super cool and super fine. Um, but I also really like the idea of games with no difficulty settings. Um, it's almost like uh, being a minority in the world. When two black people in America see each other, they're like, bruh, like we have a shared experience that transcends anything we can communicate. Like we both know shit about each other, even without knowing anything about each other, because we have like a shared experience. And I think that games with no difficulty settings are similar. You talk to a dude, it's like, did you beat yeah. Dark Souls? I beat Dark Souls. Like, brother, yes. We like, we we know, we instantly know all the struggles. We really it's not like a question of like, did you do some, okay, sure. Some people roll in full havels with like max fucking weight or whatever. But like, regardless, like there's like that shared mm. experience of like, we both beat the game on like the same fucking difficulty. That's like a cool experience. So yeah, I, I can like see the pros and cons of both, you know? <laughs> Have you played a the, game? I love this John shit, by the way. Code. I just want to point this out. If I had made your joke just now, your whole chat would have been like, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, That's God. why I can't because phonetically it doesn't work. And then my chat right now is like, whoa, what the fuck? What the, what the hell is this? Wow, it's supposed to clip that. Jesus, like, shut the fuck up. It's a joke. Both chats, both getting all antsy. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll survive. Collectives, calm down. I thought if we you were can't all handle it, then this is your opportunity to bail from us and never return. Well, let's just say, how are they watching us <laughs> this is, having this reaction? Yeah, if this is like... the one that turns the tide for you, then, I don't know, you're an interesting person. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. Why? What did you guys? Did you guys mm. talk about this? Where do you guys stand on it? Some people feel very strongly about difficulty settings. Um. Well, we we we'll get into the depth of the point of being like. So I think it sounds like intuitive and agreeable to be like an additional easy mode should be fine. Stop complaining. But we were like, okay, so what possible harm could be drawn from something like that? It's like the extended times to create that mode have taken away from anything else that may have been developed, and Boring. perhaps the game is balanced in a particular way. You so can always do. You mechanics. can do. You can add easy difficulty settings by just like tweaking some stats. That's not hard. You know, HP that modifiers, damage modifiers, easy, you have an easy though. mode, easy. You well, that. so that's the thing, right? Like, maybe you could, but if you take Elden Ring, it's like, which mm -hmm. you're familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. The Spirit Ashes were clearly added to help players who are shit at the game. Yeah. Like, it's hardcore. It's, it's the same like, as summons in any Dark Souls, yeah. Yes. Um, at the same time, though, like, Ashes aren't telegraphed very well as being something that's, like, an overtly OP shit thing that can, like, stomp the game on your first go around. So you've got this angle of the game's getting unbalanced without your real knowledge of understanding of like what the fuck's going on in terms of what's the difference between like upgrading your sword adding uh, particular sword crafts or things which seems a lot more embedded into mm -hmm. trying to figure out a build to attack the enemy versus spirit ashes which most veteran players or at least ones that like respect the going through dark souls without looking up things online they were like don't don't use them you don't want to use them in the same way they say don't use summons like um the more mechanics they add to try and make it easier for um the same mainstream audiences that can dilute the uh, the more difficult well, I mean, like, experiences. They already had summons in all the Dark Souls games, right? They did, uh, but I, was, I guess that's, that's where it comes to like the how where you draw the line of like you didn't opt out of using them, but then I guess you can opt out of using everything. 
True. But I so, think the summons are, as, like, the spirit of Dark Souls to me seems to be you're locked in one-on-one -on -one combat with another big dude. Dude, they design it absolutely that way. They, I don't think they yeah. really mm -hmm. account that well for additional... That's why it feels like it's a much more definitive line being crossed. Meanwhile, yeah. spirit ashes are introduced like in almost the story as being like this thing you're supposed to use. And when you use the first like initial ones, they're not that great. But eventually, you'll unlock yeah. ones that just stomp the bosses for you, and you're like, "Oh shit, I should. I probably shouldn't have been using these actually." Yeah, you should. I mean, it's Dark Souls. You wanna you should be one on one combat. If you wanna upgrade your sword or do shit like that, um, you can do that. But the you know, um... like, because I'm assuming you value that, right? Like, because you were saying about it earlier, like defeating everything yourself rather than summoning. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm saying thematically, that just kind of feels like what's supposed to happen. And then, like, the way that the oh, combat yeah, system makes spelled right, yeah, go ahead. From, like, a player point of view, I assume you find that more satisfying as well. Do you know that, like, YMS went through, like, all the games, but he summoned for everything and <laughs> had everyone kill everything for him? It's like... Oh, I don't know why. I'm autistic. I beat all those games with, like, one HP, because I just like the challenge of it, but I'll spend, like, a week or two. Oh, I was going to say, like, I thought I was bad with that, but when I, when I was seeing you, how far you go, I was like, all right. Yeah, I think Melina yeah. took me, like, fucking 500 deaths or 600 deaths or some stupid shit. It was a lot of fucking pain and agony which one's yeah. your favorite by the way the my favorite fight well favorite from software game um i really liked sekiro and i liked elden ring and i really liked dark souls 3 i don't know which one i would choose fuck i liked all of those a lot but they're all like fairly different but still souls games yeah i'm just thankful we didn't say dark souls 2 <laughs> dark souls 2 yeah. was a fine game people rag no. on that so oh, no. fucking hard no. it was okay oh, no. <laughs> all right chill the no, fuck out hide. No. Fight, oh fight, my fight, god fight. <laughs> Hey, man, if you think it's a good game where you're filled with bugs have wonky-ass hitboxes and none of the fucking AI knows what to do when you walk in a certain direction, I, I, I mean, if, if, that's, if that's what you think the mid-game is, you know, fair enough. I don't know. I'd have to go back and play it again, but, like, that was, I beat all three Dark Souls, and then I remember going through reviews. I don't remember anything exceptionally wonky or stupid. The only thing that I would be hardcore critical of Dark Souls 2 for, which I think I remember, was... It doesn't count as a sophisticated or well thought out boss fight if you're just making like two or three of the same fucking enemy to fight. And I feel like and that happened do that a couple a times, lot. which is so. I think Elden Ring had that problem a little bit. It too, did though. do that a couple times in Elden Ring too, Elden which is yeah. so I annoying. Know. The game is not built for multi enemy combat. Also, no. the game is not built to hit things in the fucking air. Stop ever fucking putting air enemies in that fucking game too. It's so <laughs> annoying. That's so true. Yeah. Hey, you fucking got a jumping birds. attack now. I think that um. <laughs> Jesus. Getting our memes. Yeah, I see. Yeah. It is true. Our meme connoisseurs oh, are in the kitchen. Um, Neat. Uh, what about Bloodborne? Oh, Bloodborne! How could I forget? Bloodborne is really cool, too. I love that game. Very, uh... Yeah. The aesthetic and Hey, you can't say the game. four of them are great. Pick one. You gotta pick one. Oh, man, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm mean. It's gonna come... It's honest <laughs> to God, it's gonna come down to aesthetic. It's gonna be like... Do I like the... It's gonna be the anime of Sekiro. Or is it gonna be like the noir fucking um gothic setting of bloodborne which one would i choose i'd probably lean towards bloodborne slightly though why you betrayed the weebs <laughs> oh my god always a good move <laughs> it's always a good move top 10 anime betrayals i think bloodborne is a really fucking popular pick which is crazy as well because of the fact that the fucking 30 fps cap that it rarely ever even manages to get to anyway my and favorite thing for bloodborne was fire. when the game first came out before they updated it you had to wait like fucking 45 seconds between every death for it to reload entire areas oh, yeah. oh my god that was the big cringe See, I didn't adds, play it adds attention out. to the game you don't want to die even more now yeah, yeah that, that is kind of true Still can't believe that game hasn't been ported to PC. I it's crazy, know. it really is. People keep saying like this spaghetti edit, uh, spaghetti coding has got to be the reason because all red tape. It can't like they can't think of anything of other reasons. It's like <laughs> there's money on the table ready to be taken. Yeah. God of War, Spider Man, you know. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. The reason there was never a Metal Gear Solid Four on Xbox 360 or PC because there was apparently like a lot of um, funky code going on with that engine. People aren't ready for Metal Gear Solid 4. Humanity isn't ready for it, okay? God, do you... Oh, can I just say the best time of my life? There were the two best times of my life, okay? Love to hear that. Hmm, all right. Number Wait one was when... Number one was when Daisy first came out, and it was like the newest, freshest thing. People didn't know what they were about. Yeah, shit. people were talking on mics. Oh yeah, they didn't know what was going on. You would make enemies and friends and alliances. That game was horseshit. It, it was, out, so. but it was <laughs> so it was much fun. <laughs> You'd like it was absolutely awful. I have it's my most played game on Steam. 
<laughs> You'd open a door and randomly your legs would be broken it's and you're just... like screaming for a friend, help me. He'd come give you a blood transfusion between, and you'd die because it was the wrong the blood. Between the horrific, like everything was bad about it. Like it didn't look good. It was what? insanely buggy. It ran like garbage. Yep. The bugs were insane. And yet somehow we, we, we were able to just like squeeze blood out of a stone yeah. and get some strange experience that resembled engagement. The constant back and forth between like zombies are worthless and do nothing versus zombies are phasing through yeah, with the walls updates, to absolutely. eat you and shit. And like, but there was that moment. And then there was the second moment that was the happiest moment of my life. And that was the day before Metal Gear Solid Five came out. And we had those epic trailers the nuclear song that everybody was guessing what that game was going to be it was so cool, so much fun, and then just. Be <sighs> you know, I like Metal Gear Solid Five. No. Do you like what it from a that? gameplay standpoint, though? Mechanically? From a gameplay standpoint, it was the best Metal Gear Solid. The gameplay was amazing. It's actually, the gameplay being so good is what makes that game even more sad, because that engine is never going right. to get good use now, except for the weird gotcha fucking games they make. Anyway. I enjoyed playing Metal Gear Solid Five, but it's the only one I've played. I don't know what the fuck's yeah. going on. <laughs> I, can't tell you anything about it. I don't know, like, there's this guy, and he's on fire, and he's flying, and there's yeah. this chick, and, and she flies too, and she's wearing a gas mask, and then, and then Ooh. it's like, all right, that's Skull weird. Fight. It's like this, so yeah. Wild. There's a guy with a skull and a cowboy hat, and I'm just like, can I, can I go play the game? It's actually really fun. Can I go play the game? It's especially well, crazy because like they, uh... Metal Gear Solid Three felt really dated in terms of like I feel like I'm playing some shit in like um in, in, in like the time period that's appropriate. They're using like radios and shit. They've got like the the Shagohod at the end is like a tank. Like it makes sense. But dude, Metal mm. Gear Solid 5. Metal Gear 5. That it thing was a like Gundam fuck fucking of, Metal yeah. Gear. That shit was in Sal Salanther Hamther Puss. It was like a flying fucking mecha from like Zone of the Enders. Like what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. And then like. You guys still speaking like, English? I'm a fool. I mean the, the mechanical prosthetic thing was like already he's like. Okay, oh yeah. All right. Oh, okay. It's you know? special. Yeah. They had like sure. more advanced technology than like Metal Gear Solid 4. And I'm like what the fuck is happening here? It was also the perfect opportunity to tie in so many people in the Metal Gear Solid story, but instead they bring in Skullface and then they delete him from all the history? Like, why would you do that? Because that game was, it ran out of time. I feel, like yeah, because I, been... I feel like I got to the end of that game and it just sort of, like, stopped. Like, I could still play it, but it's almost like I got soft-locked at the end where you can still play, but you can't progress, and I don't know what happened. I don't remember if I didn't do something right, but I was, I was doing, like, doing story missions, and then it just stopped giving me story missions to do. Uh -oh. And I, it, what, what, did it just end or was there an end? You know, it doesn't matter what the ending was because I don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> the saddest part was, um, do you guys, do you guys remember when for Kendrick Lamar, people thought there was going to be like, um, I think it was a damn part two was coming out there. Does anybody follow any of this shit? No. no oh, never mind. Okay. Lamar, ba basically, a whole bunch of people on the hip hop heads, like, uh, subreddit had, like, convinced themselves that there was, like, a secret part two Kendrick Lamar album, a full album that was about to drop. And everybody was, like, mind fucked others. And it, uh, it never happened. It wasn't a thing. But it happened with Metal Gear Solid 5, too, where everybody was like, oh my God, like, Hideo is about to release, like, the secret part two of the game. And people were digging through Easter eggs and figuring out, like, all of the shit. And, like, oh my God, like, I think on this date, he's going to release the true ending. And, like, it was all fake. <laughs> And gets fired. <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> oh, Didn't man. a similar thing happen with Mass Effect 3 where everyone was so pissed off with the ending that they were convinced yeah. that they were ramping up to something even bigger? And something yeah, that they're, gonna, with them. Yeah. they're gonna update it, they're gonna change, and they never did. And so it's been it's been shit ever since. That happened with the Sherlock show. Uh, H. Bomber guy goes over in his video. The, the episodes were so awful, the fans were convinced that they were doing it on purpose and they were going to release a final episode <laughs> to basically recontextualize everything and make it all make sense. <laughs> oh, it was no. people like following clues and trying to figure out all the decipher codes and stuff. Hey, Mahler, oh, when do you think we're getting the real ending for Midnight Mass? Oh, no. Oh. Uh oh. Ouch. That makes me sad. <laughs> kind of no. reminds me in uh, Breaking Bad when the subreddit at some point was like, Fuck, there was a good meme image posted, but they'd be like, oh my god, did you see the way the napkin was positioned in that yeah. fucking scene yeah, where yeah, it was yeah, showing yeah. that? Yeah. They'd be like, the, the tomato store is fucking on this side, it was red, and that represents rage, and that's Walt. And he's like, well, what the fuck is. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Vince Gilligan would be like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well done, Vince. Well done. Totally. Go watch all episodes again. Maybe you find more. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, you see, the way Skylar is positioned in the reflection of the microwave, I can only assume she is a beef burrito. It, I can't mm. believe I found this. This is the Delicious. picture that I remember, yeah. Green napkin <laughs> between Skylar and oh Walt. God. Money equals green. Money is standing between them. The wall is exposed brick, <laughs> representing how the characters' relationships are now being laid bare. Like, yeah, like all this stupid shit. <laughs> this like, is, so like... Dumb. <laughs> Because I, I remember, right. I was, fucking, I, I was, I was totally in the uh, forums for Breaking Bad when it was coming to, to its end, and everyone was obsessed and over every last deal to figure out the ending. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Do you remember my favorite subreddit in all of Reddit history? Represents how much I want to suck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> my favorite subreddit towards the end of all things that existed was the fucking Free Folk subreddit when you realized that the Game oh, of yeah. Thrones was truly shit and it was just time to oh. meme your way into the end of times. And goddamn, that Free Folk subreddit helped me maintain my sanity. Yeah, because <laughs> the Game of Thrones mainline subreddit, they were like not accepting the, the sort of dour atmosphere. They were trying to maintain like happy. Feels, but free folks just went just nuts. Fuck, they were like, dude. nah. On an open field, Ned. It was just goddamn, dude. That whole subreddit was fire for a while. Uh, have we you guys watched? We shouldn't bring up Game of Thrones because yeah, we don't want to. <laughs> yeah, but have you guys we'll watched? Here. We'll be here for another twenty-four hours. Yeah. Have you guys been watching that House uh, of the yeah. Dragon show? Oh, there's another episode I got to see in like oh yeah, six yeah. hours, right? I know about Bore Clippy Farty. That's about my knowledge. Yeah, the first episode was fine. What do you think? Oh, I haven't watched it. That's the a first lot of episode was okay. Okay. Yeah, that seems to be the general sentiment for the most part. Like, it's, it's, I think everyone's kind of battered wife right now, and they're like, the husband <laughs> comes like, home and he's like, I'm, I'm done I'm drinking. Again. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know if I want to go back to you, man. <laughs> you reminded me of why I binge watched uh, anime in the past or shouldn't have passed because I want to know that it's not going to get completely fucked. Yeah, right. but remember the good times. <laughs> I don't want to get Dexter or Game of Thrones or some shit. You know? well, lost. Mm. Oh god, Dexter fucked me twice. <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah, it twice. fucked everyone twice. Wait, is the new season really bad? I didn't watch the new season. Yeah, it's yeah. awful. It's so bad. It Correct is me if fucking I'm wrong. dog shit. Oh, the new oh, season, God. like, does, doesn't it, like, it has promise and then it completely fucks itself again? Is oh, it, isn't no. that what it, they do? It, it has the illusion of promise at the beginning, but then you go back after watching the ending and you realize that the writing was actually really shit throughout, but there is the seed of something great in oh. there. Like, if they had just given us certain payoffs... It might have been forgivable, but no. They like fucking fucking Dexter gets caught because they forgot what fucking drug he actually used in the main series. He gets caught because he uses ketamine. No, he never used fucking ketamine. He used fucking M twenty four, whatever the fuck. It, it's not the same drug. Yet this is crucial. Ugh. I'm not gonna go off on a Dexter rant. I'm not. I'm <laughs> going to just. I like Dexter's okay lab in my happy place where I pretend that he had the Breaking Bad ending. I'm gonna pretend. I'm gonna be in my happy spot. Breaking Bad ended on a high note. Even if I, even if there were a little bit of bumps along the way, I'd give him, I'd give him that at least. I yeah. I'd say that. But did you, did you watch Battle Call Oh uh, fuck no. I have a hard autistic feeling about like watching a show that's supposed to be a prequel where everybody's <laughs> younger. That just like fucks my head a little bit. <laughs> they, um, I mean, the big, obviously, the big huge payoffs of that show are all post Breaking Bad, mm -hmm. so. You know that you could tell when watching it that they were like, "We know you're here for this. You had to wait six seasons, you little bitches, but now you get to find out like, what was happened it, after it, Breaking Bad." Is that show over or? Yeah. Oh, was it good? Yeah, Do you think it was worth starting it? it right now? I'm on season one. Do you think it's I worth mean, watching it all the way if, for some of the has? Or but I've heard it is. It's um I, well, if you like Breaking Bad and you want to know more about Soul's history, you get every it's. Everything on the tin, you get exactly what you're looking for. Um, and you get to find out what happens to Saul ultimately post-Breaking Bad, which is some fun. In fact, you know what? What do you think of El Camino? That might help me Didn't understand. Watch that either. <laughs> when there's like a really good thing, I don't know. I just Sometimes I don't want to dive into side media. Have, you don't watch any anime, do you, right? Do you know right. what Steins Gate is? Or... I know what it is, I don't watch. Okay, I really, yeah, really like Steins Gate. So I didn't watch the OVA episode zero, I didn't watch the movie, didn't watch the second season. Like, you know what, this is like a perfect anime to me. I don't want to fuck it up, okay? <laughs> so I just don't watch it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Was it, was El Camino good? I thought it was fine. Um, the yeah. thing is, the thing about El Camino is basically they like, in all the ways you would expect, Jesse manages to acquire money and options, and then he escapes to a new life. And it's just like, yep, I figured that all happened, mm -hmm. really. It's, it's kind a of, perfectly fine epilogue. Yeah. It's yeah, it's. But I like really his fine. ending in the show. I wouldn't want to see. I actually kind of agree him. with you. Yeah, uh, I really like the last Jesse sort of yep. shot we get. 
Um, it's, you know, he does a good job in it, and it's like, like I said, everything plays out kind of the way you would expect in terms of him getting resources and getting out. You know that he yeah. fucked it all up, right? If Jesse would have just been fucking chill, Walt had everything under control, but he had to fuck it up and turn him into his <laughs> brother and everything. <laughs> We this had sounds... a good thing with Frigg, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this sounds like a public nice story on Walt's behalf. Child I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Jesse fucked it all oh. up. If he would have just been chill, everything would have been fine. But he fucked it all up. Fuck Jesse. Fucking Dude, Jesse loser. fucks it up like, over and over again. Yeah, he does. <laughs> His life is a fuck up. The, Walt was doing him a favor break. when he let that druggy girl die, too. She was oh, not good for him. God. She was not good oh, for him. Hmm. She wasn't good for him. Walt was doing him a favor, okay? Wow. <laughs> we do not condone no, I got <laughs> Destiny is an advocate of tough love. Mm. I, I can see that. Um, actually, what got me back into like rewatching Breaking Bad is I just started watching clips of it on YouTube. And what I quickly discovered is that Breaking Bad clips on YouTube have the best comments on YouTube. <laughs> So there's the fucking scene where um, Walt and Hank and Marie and Skylar, they're all in the restaurant confronting each other about mm -hmm. what's going on. And he's handing over the confession tape. Um, and Marie just goes, oh, why don't you kill yourself, Walt? Why oh, you, yeah, you... that fucking thing. Why did you say that? <laughs> why don't you just kill yourself? And then the, the comment under is just like, I'm not sure what Walt did, but that's very rude of that lady to tell someone to kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> By the way, we uh, we, 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 we made it. Rags, Fringy. Good job. Did we do it? Hours. I, was, I was high in that clock. We did it, Reddit. Right that clock. Oh, Absolutely, we did it. Like. And I know, Robbie, right. I've got to get back up to watch The House of Dragon with Gary and then review it with him live in about five hours. So I'm going to have oh to go goodness. and All sleep right. for as long as Wait, I Wait, can I ask you one quick question? Uh, one final it. media question. Two. I'm curious. I watched somebody that's. I watched The Wire. I love it. I'm, I'm one of those guys. It's like, you got to watch The Wire. It's my favorite show of all time. I haven't seen The Sopranos. Is it worth it? I haven't seen The Wire or The Sopranos. Jesus, uh, you'll Christ. probably you'll probably like it, but not as much as The Wire. That's how I felt about it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, hey, listen. Right. Good job, well, for you guys. Sorry, I couldn't come yesterday. Just there was it was. Well, no, I really appreciate you popping in now. Yeah, as well, you you, nice you realize you injected the battery into us temporarily there, so yeah, I appreciate yeah. It. That's good. I'm glad. You Congratulations on to the, to the final one line. day. Finishing. I'll change your mind on Interstellar, okay? How many, yeah, how many year, uh, how many years has this show gone on for? How many seasons or whatever? Four. Four years. Damn, four. Nice. The big four. What? What's what's four? The four-year anniversary? Is it is Diamond? Diamond is four, right? Is it? Isn't platinum. The Quadrilon. Gold. Something Something good, right? Probably. It's right, not like so. zinc. Oh, we got the zinc anniversary. <laughs> the ten no, anniversary. nobody wants to celebrate zinc. Lead oh, some tasty corium. Have you not watched the PSA on zinc from The Simpsons? No, you I need haven't. Zinc in your life, where Otherwise, would we be think, without I zinc? I think zinc helps you. I love you. Oh, it was M99 that Dexter used. They they fucking fucked it up. Okay, M99. He used M99 and they fucking got him because he used ketamine in the show because he was working for a vet, but he never used M9. He never used ketamine in the main show because it's. He, we he didn't work for a vet in the main show. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping now. I'm stopping. You said you were stopping before and then you did it again. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone, yeah. Someone, yeah. And then someone pointed it out. That, so, yeah. You lied to us oh, twice, like that. Likely story. Damn. Yeah, you lied just like that. So you fuck. Yeah. Me. You know, it's fucking poetic. It's fucking poetic. Rhymes. You lied just like a rock star does. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude. a rock star <laughs> who drinks, swears, lies, and is a hypocrite. Dude, that we the video. I'm gonna need to re-inspect that channel. That was something else. He's, oh, that is that a wild. Weird He's channel. a wizard with the English Don't language. Don't forget the channel. Diamond forgot his rock. password for. Okay, so. I'm gonna, our I'm gonna do our outro now. And uh, wait, fuck. What, what should we say? Because this is the end of the episode. Thanks everybody for watching. We can give people a very tired thank you for. Two yeah, we super appreciate it. Uh, like I said, we'll we'll collect up all the messages, super chats. We're gonna read them all on the uh, I imagine the next stream. Yep. Um, uh, fucking thank you to all the memers for making those incredible videos and all the the just the the fans of super super appreciate. It. I'm keeping this company this whole time. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll get these up gradually. Uh, I guess should be like one tomorrow and the every other day. I think for the full twenty four hours. Um, that'd be Moolah. Oh, and of course, links are still in description for me and Fringy's uh, plushies. Grab them while they're hot. Ten percent off if you grab them both at the same time. 
-hmm. it's been great. Is there anything uh, folks want to say before I'm just going to stop that outro? No, go ahead. It's been fun. No, it's been fun as always. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Yeah. We shall see you for the next uh, thing that we do, yeah. whatever it may be. See you in a year. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 See you. Bye. 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 Bye.